What are, can you guys think of like analogs in your own lives? What are things that don't seem the least bit dangerous, but like when they Our suddenly stars. whip into action, you're like, oh my gosh, I've been surrounded by dangers all along. Julia. Julia. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect example. She could just kind of run amok suddenly, right? Come on. Cars. Cars. Exactly. Like, we're, we're so proud of our cars, yes. We love our cars. We take our cars very much for granted. But does it ever occur to you, as you drive down Folly Court Road, for instance, that you're about 12 inches from two more tons of steel coming right at you, and you've got two tons with you going right at them, right? And you're going 45, 50 miles an hour. Can you imagine if you all just like decide to move over a little bit? You realize in an instant that you have been living enveloped with whale lines all the time. You know, whenever I give blood, I feel this way. I always think of this chapter whenever I give blood. I think to myself, all right, they're bleeding me out right now, right? <laughs> like, blood is just dripping out of my veins, yes? Yeah. And, and frankly, if that lady doesn't come over and stop this, <laughs> I'm going to die. I, I'm that close. I've had a dream about this. Huh. Interesting. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> All right. That's what um, I tell you. How about some other things that are the ever-present perils of life that we just like never occurs to us? Water heaters. <laughs> water heaters. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, uh, just blow up in Annapolis a couple of weeks ago. There was this huge mansion that just went up and oh yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Christmas tree. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So great. They didn't take it down. It dried out. It started on fire. And they left the, they left the lights on. But, they left the lights on. Uh, but, you know, on the tree. But there's something like Mr. Max getting it. Like something seems so benign, right? It seems like so harmless. Until, I don't know if you've ever been around a fire that's gotten out of control. Have you ever, ever happened to you? Like, when you're sitting, I've, this has happened to me many times. When I was a little kid, I actually set five acres of field on fire. <laughs> uh, and I remember the moment where the match, which my sister and I were playing with, shame on us, um, became a conflagration, and we realized, like, oh my gosh, this thing is way out of our control, and we're going to get roasted alive right now, right? Like, it's, it happens in an instant, right? Now, look, so what I hope you guys are seeing is that Ishmael does this cool thing in the, no in, in the chapter. I want you to make a note of this, right? On the one hand, he just introduces us to a technical thing. If you read the first sentence, what does it say in the first sentence, Taylor? Why do we need to know this? Um, all men. No, the first sentence of the chapter. He says, listen, I need to tell you this. Wait. Why, Eric? It's with reference to a land seen shortly to be described. Okay, so in other words, something that's going to happen in a minute, you need to know about this stuff, otherwise it's not going to make sense to you, right? Are you following me? So what do the technical chapters do for the plot? They explain them. Yeah, they, they help you understand like what you're going to be experiencing soon. You with me? Yeah. So we get a technical chapter, we learn a little about whaling, but we then do that classic Ishmael thing where we go from something that's very literal, to a figurative view of it, or something that's really concrete, you can see it, you can look at it, to something that's like kind of uh, amusing on what? What's he musing on? On the head. What is he pondering here? Like death. At the end. Yeah, death, mortality. And he says the, like uh, the kind of um, tenuousness our grasp on life is. And, and notice this, can I say one more thing? It's, notice it's kind of cool because he's, I hope you write this down. He's extending a metaphor, I think, that he's been using. What's the metaphor have, that's been being used all along out here for, like, the way life works out? Faith. Well, that's the, no, the metaphor for faith. The loom. And what are looms, what do they use? They use, uh, you know, yarn or string. And what is this thing has a very kind of loom-like quality to it. Are you with me? Uh, what it, do you guys remember what the, one of the fates does to kind of determine when your life's over? She cuts your line, right? So, you know, you, she cuts the end of your string. Go ahead. Yeah. Owen, oh, nice laugh. The whale is pulling the strings on the boat. Oh, say more. Yeah. Get the camera on that guy. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Say more, Owen. So, if the string represents your, like, your connection with fate, and the whale is kind of like the like the controller of your fate. Or of the line. Or of the line. And then it pulls you into death or something better or yeah. It's kind of like uh, Ahab's relationship with the Moby Dick that the Moby Dick pulls the fate of Ahab. Oh that's wow. nice. That's great. great. Excellent. That was, that was yeah, so um that's an excellent observation. Notice this though. This is kind of what's kind of cool about the end of the chapter. Who is he talking about at the end, the part I read? The reader. Yeah. 
Well, he's, I mean, it's a reader, but who else? Everyone. At the end, he says, like, okay, he was talking about whalemen, but now what is he talking about? Men. All men Body live in Valleft and Whale Islands, oh. right? This is about you and me and everybody. You with me? At first, he was talking about the, the kind of intrepidness of the whale man because he kind of does this every day. It's no big deal to him. He's used to it. But then he says, oh, by the way, this is you too. This is an image of your life. You're surrounded by things that could kill you in an instant, right? Go, Julia. Um, it kind of reminds me of like last year when we read All Quiet on the Western Front. The lines, like the oh, wires yeah, yeah. that Ooh. hung low, they like don't seem like something that could kill you. Wait, what? What, what wires that hung low? Like. Was it the bar? Yeah, it was like, no, it was like, was like when, they, when, they they when they were drive by. Yeah, when they were driving. Were yeah. they snares or something? Or? No, 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 it was like I behind the lines, like the lorries are going up to the front. Yeah. Someone has to hold a pole to keep yeah, the, it. Yeah. I think those might just be like telephone wire. Yeah, and like, yeah something like that. And, and, and what's the point about Well, that? they said that like when you, they don't seem like something that's dangerous, but like almost more people died from those lines yeah. than like war itself. Yeah, you think you're going to get killed by an enemy bullet, right? But instead, yeah. your, your head's get lopped off yeah. by some line that someone wasn't paying attention to, right? So, yeah, excellent. That's a good, good connection. Yeah, now, let me just point out one last thing in this chapter, which I thought was kind of cool. Ishmael takes this observation in a funny little way. He says this thing. Now, look, if you're a philosopher, if you're a philosopher, how will you feel when you're sitting here rowing this whaleboat? You'll feel the same way you feel in front of a fire. Why is that? And notice, that. notice the nice little parallel. What do you have in front of the fire? A poker, a poker in your hand, which is kind of like a harpoon, right? He's like, and here you're seated, yes? So you're seated in a boat in the middle of the ocean about to hunt a whale with a harpoon in your hand, or you're seated in front of your fire with a harpoon in your hand, I mean, with a poker in your hand. Like, where should you feel safer? Well, you should be yeah, safe normally you'd say, like, you feel, but if you're a philosopher, what do you know? You can't cheat death. You, you can't cheat death. Like, what could happen to you in front of that fire? You could fall in. You could, yeah. Uh, okay. I guess you could <laughs> fall in. Right. Yeah. Uh, a spark could set the place ablaze. You could have a brain aneurysm, right? You could be like a poor, poor Mrs. Um, who died of a brain aneurysm? Come on, you should all know this. Come on, you know it, Lois. She was arguing with a peddler. Oh, Come on, who was it? You're like, boom, her blood vessel burst oh, and she died. Oh, Red that, uh, Van yes, Dame Van Winkle oh, died yeah. like that, right? Yeah. She didn't know what was going on. She was shopping and suddenly she's dead. Are you with me? So, here's the thing. Ishmael says this funny thing. If you're, if you're wise, this should teach you something. This should, you should be calm in all circumstances because you're just as subject to death here as you are anywhere. Or I guess you could also read it the other way. How should you feel in your chair back at home? Scared. Terrified. <laughs> right? You should be terrified at all times. That's a pretty bad way to live. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I have a feeling he means the other way because he's yeah. pretty um, comfortable with the notion that like it all could end at any time. Yeah, go. Um, so back to saying like the whales, like the one pulling the strings. What does that mean about how they kill the whales? Like if they're the ones like they're the ones like cheating death. Yeah, of, I guess like, that's every, like, yeah. There's like. They're, they're kind of killing death almost. They're yeah, or at that moment, if you're going to take it Owen's direction, figuratively, like, that's a moment where they've taken charge of the thing that seems to be the agent. And now they're the agent, right? Yeah. Yeah. You with me? And that's what happens in chapter 61. So let's, let's transfer to 61 for a minute. I have one main thing I want to talk about in chapter 61. And it's, it's this. Um, so, Stubb kills a whale. So we got our first... Uh, you know, that's what we came out here for, right? Hunts of whales. Well, we got our first one, and here's here's my big uh, my big point that I like to emphasize today. And it's this: the ambiguity of whaling. All right, now let me ask you this: you should all be able to answer this. What has Ishmael been selling us for the last sixty chapters? about whaling. But it's noble. It's, it's noble. noble. It's glorious, yes? So, um, I, I remember in particular chapter, I think just 25, which is the advocate, you guys remember that? Yeah. 24. Where we were, is it 24? And 25. Yeah, you're right. It was 24 was the advocate, and 25 is postscript, right? You guys remember that? Mm -hmm. And uh, good work, Wyatt. Thanks. Um, so in the advocate, he basically makes this argument, right? He says, listen, you people out there who think that whaling is just mere butchery, let me explain some things to you, right? 
if we're butchers, well then so is every soldier in the universe, right? Um, we bring great wealth to the world, we bring light to the world, we bring industry to the world, we bring the gospel to the ends of the earth. It's a great, noble calling, right? Yeah. So he's talking about the nobility of whaling. Okay, I think we all agree on that. You know, these whalemen are unbelievably bold and brave, and they just laugh at danger, right? You've got to admire these guys. So there's that. That's the one. What does ambi mean in ambiguity? What is ambi? If you're ambidextrous, oh, you're double. ambivalent, double. it means both, right? Right? Uh, if you're ambidextrous, it means you got two right hands, yes? Yeah. Or two left hands. Both hands. Dexter, Latin scholars. Dexter. Um, like sorry. No, dexter yeah. means right. Right. So if you're ambidextrous, you got like two right hands, yes? So amb. Ambiguity means like there's two ways of thinking of this thing, two you know opposing ways. So on the one hand, we have the nobility of whaling. Now I want to make the argument that Ishmael purposefully makes you feel a certain way in this chapter about whaling. Like I don't know about you, but like, how did you feel at the end of this chapter? I felt like it was pretty sketchy. Like how did the the hunt make you feel? It actually made me sad. Did, did you? Okay. Tim said disgusted. Did anybody feel like kind of horrified? Or, yeah. I mean, like, I mean, do you? Did you? Like, how would you describe the way that uh, Stubb actually puts the whale to death? What does he essentially do? <laughs> you know, give me a verb for it, not just like hand motions. Shame. Repeatedly, repeatedly stabbing. Stab? Like, doesn't he basically stab this whale to death? Yeah. And I don't know if you understood this, but like, the whale spouts blood. Yeah, it's yeah. Now, where is the spout? What is you know what the spout on a whale is? Above yeah. the yeah. heart. What is it? Oh, His heart blew up. It's no, not it's air, it's water release. It's just like his gills. No. Okay, I want you to pause this room. No. Okay, you're not a whale, but you are a mammal, right? So, what would it correspond to in you? Your lungs. Your lungs. Well, that's where. Your nose. Yeah, your nose, right? The 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 his spout is essentially your nostrils. So if your if your nostrils were pouring out blood, yeah, what would, where would that blood be coming your from? Your head, your 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 brain. You, it'd be coming from your lungs. Are you seeing this? Oh, so what's oh, how does this whale die? No, it's not internally bleeding. He hits a lung. Yeah, the heart is broken. The no, that's what he says. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, <laughs> here's what you should understand. That whale is drowning. Oh. It, it, it's drowning in its own blood, Ooh. right? He has managed to pierce this. There's a sac behind the the lungs of a whale, which is, is, is an unusual. It's mostly only in sperm whales. It's a sac of like hyper oxygenated blood. That's yeah. why sperm whales can dive so deep. And he basically, by stirring around in there, like punctured that thing into the lung. The thing's lung fills up with blood, coughing blood because it can't breathe, and just rolls over, right? And if you remember. What is the harpoon for? Like just, just, just attaching to the yeah. whale. But what does uh, Stubb throw again and again? Not a harpoon. His, a dart. And the thing you need about the dart is it doesn't have a, uh, a barb on it. So it basically is a barbless spear that you can throw at the thing, pull it back. Throw at the thing. What are you trying to do? Kill it. No, no, no. Like, 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 what are you trying to do? Trying to hit it in the right spot. You're trying to weaken it by doing what, though? Drowning. But no, you're trying to like basically get it to bleed. Oh. Are you with me? You want the thing to bleed. You're stabbing it from a distance. And then when it's just completely exhausted, he basically like stabs it to death, right? Yeah. And it's plain if uh, you read carefully that Ishmael is is uh, highlighting the vicious lang vicious language. So let's read a couple passages where. He, it makes kind of the point I'm trying to get at is the other side of whaling, the kind of cruel, vicious uh, part of whaling. So every turn to page um, 255. Uh, okay? I'll, I'll re what I want to do on page 255 is emphasize the picture before. All right? So 255 is the before picture. So you ready for this? Listen to what he says. Okay, they see the whale, right? Remember this? They see the whale, but the whale doesn't see them. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did all you catch this? Did they row up to the whale? No, they no. paddled. They, they paddled, paddled, paddled really right? Quiet. Do you understand what that means or not? Uh, yeah. When yeah. you row, you're in 
you're, when you roll your, you're, like imagine this, this table is actually about the size of a whale boat. When you roll, you're in the middle of the boat holding onto a long oar, and the oar is rubbing against the gunnel, so it's making a lot of noise. But if you're paddling, what you do is you go over here and you sit up on the gunnel, and you're directly in the water so you're not touching the boat and transferring a lot of noise to the whale, right? So they're sneaking up on the whale. Remember this? So let's look at what, how the whale is described. Here we go. Okay, here we go. Um, suddenly bubbles seem bursting beneath my closed eyes. Like vices, my hands grasp the shrouds. That's like the ropes. Some invisible agent. Are you guys with me? Do you see where I am? About yeah. two thirds of the way down, 255. All right, my hands grasp the shrouds. Some invisible gracious agency preserved me when, with a shock, I came back to life. Okay, here we go. And lo, close under our lee, we all know what that means, yeah. not 40 fathoms off, it's like a couple hundred feet away, a gigantic sperm whale lay rolling in the water like a capsized hull of a frigate, his broad, glassy back, glossy back of an Ethiopian hue, glistening in the sun's rays like a mirror, but lazily undulating in the trough of the sea, and ever and anon tranquilly spouting his vapory jet, the whale looked like a portly burger smoking his pipe of a warm afternoon. Now, how would you characterize that description of that whale? Like the whale is it's just chilling. very happy. It's chilling. Relaxing. Happy. Like, do you guys all know what a burger is? Yeah. Um, it's, no. it's a it's a kind of like a, think about it, Smith. A burger would have been like someone in Germany or Switzerland, and he's portly, remember? And he was he do, he's like a kind of a, a, a minor nobility, right? And he's just like walking down the street, smoking his pipe, right? Feeling very good about the world. Yes. What harm is this? Well, Nothing. 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 There. No, and he's, he's describing these beautiful terms, right? He's glistening. He's like a mirror. Glossy. He's glossy. And what's he doing in the water? Just what's he say he's doing? Rolling. He's like rolling. Like, what would you say if you saw this whale? What would you say he's doing? <laughs> he's playing. Yeah. Wait, are you guys seeing this? Yeah. No, Here's I'm, I'm a whale right that's now. just playing. Yeah. <laughs> now. Oh wait a minute. But that pipe poor whale was thy last. Oh never. Mind. Wait, we'll get to that. So, so, okay, so one, I hope you guys see that the whale is described in very harmless terms, right? Now, when the whale realizes that they're there, what does it do immediately? Swim. Swim. Oh, it oh, dies, it dies. Yeah, it, it, in other words, more generally, what does it try to do? What's its relationship to them? Escape, it wants to get out of there, right? It doesn't like turn on them and viciously pursue them like we've been reading, right? It just likes to get away, right? And they wait, remember they wait, 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 they're like, okay, let's see. And it pops up near whom? Uh, Stubby. 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 And Stubby. off they go. They roll like the dickens and they get up near and who jumps up? Stubster. Uh, Tugo. 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 Like pearls the harpoon. And then what does the whale do once the harpoon's in him? No, they won't die. They swim, swim, swim. Now, this is the thing that we should have learned in an earlier chapter is that whales can't just dive. They have to, they have to take, take breaths first, yeah. right? Wow. So this whale, when it's coming up, isn't just going to dive down again. It's going to yeah. run right. until it gets to safety. And apparently, actually, sperm whales have to breathe seven times. <laughs> and, and like later on, you'll see <laughs> yeah. that's it. That's good, Julie. Seven. Right. Now look. So off the whale goes. Yes. Yeah. And now here's a term I want to teach you guys. It's called a Nantucket sleigh ride. Ooh. What do you think of Nantucket sleigh ride? <laughs> when, you jump, the when you jump on the, when you jump on the, the, um, the whale, the whale and you're riding it while it swims. <laughs> um, no, that's not a cuisine. That is a silly thing to say. Like, what do you suppose? Every whaleman went on a Nantucket sleigh ride regularly. Yeah. Oh. It's when the whale like dragged. Yeah, it's when you're being dragged by a whale and, and think of this. They're not they're not rowing anymore, right? What are they doing? They're gonna they're pull. They're just like right. hanging on for dear life, right? Yeah. Just making sure they're not gonna capsize. Because remember, they're in the ocean, right? So this whale could be swimming across waves, right? So this is a dangerous moment, right? When you're getting uh, pulled by a, a terrified. Isn't it plain? This mm, whale is terrified. How do they yeah. not capsize? Because they're crazy men, that's why. How big is this boat? It's maybe, uh, how many guys are in the boat? Six. 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 So, like, do a little calculation. How much weight do you suppose that whale is pulling? Mm, like, uh, one, two, maybe, like, a few tons, yeah? Maybe well, I think about six guys. Six guys. Six guys. I, I, I'd say probably piece. something like a thousand pounds, right? Yeah, this whale yeah, is yeah. pulling a thousand pounds, yes? And it does it for a little while, and then it's exhausted, right? Yeah. Meanwhile, it's being stabbed, yes? Now, yeah. listen to the language of the death. And I want you to tell me words that you notice that kind of orient the way you're supposed to feel about the thing. All right, so everybody turn, please. 
to the end of chapter 60, which, I'm sorry, 61, which is page 258. All right, here we go. The red tide now poured from all the sides of the monster like brooks down a hill. His tormented body rolled, not in brine, but in blood, which bubbled and seethed for furlongs behind in their wake. The slanting sun played upon the crimson pond in the sea and sent back its reflection into every face so that they all glowed to each other like red men. Wait, okay, what just happened there? What, what image? What's the use of that image? Come on, work it a little bit. Blood, blood is just sinking out of the blood. sea. Blood. Yeah, but like, what is, so the blood is on the water, right? Yeah. And the sun is shooting off the blood, and then what is it doing? It makes everyone look It makes them all kind of reddish colored, but what's his point, you think, if you want to read a little better? It kind of color like, like, what does it mean to be a red man? A native. Yeah, and come on, you're, you're a savage. Like, these guys are savage. They've turned into savages. Are you with me? Yeah. Meanwhile, and do you remember earlier they were described as being like Indians paddling? Do you remember yeah, that? Yeah. Okay, so moving on. He says the following. And all the while, jet after jet of white smoke was agonizingly shot from the spiracle of the whale, and vehement puff after puff from the mouth of the excited headsman, at every dart hauling in upon his crooked lance by the line attached to it, straightened it again by a few rapid blows against the gunwale, and then again and again said to the whale, Pull up! Pull up! He now cried to the bowsman in the waning, uh, in the waning whale relaxed in his wrath, Pull up! Close to! And the boat ranged along the fish's flanks, when reaching far over the bow, Stubb slowly churned his long, sharp lance into that fish and kept it there, carefully churning and churning as if consciously seeking to feel after some gold watch that the whale might have swallowed and which he was fearful of breaking ere he could hook it out. But that gold watch he sought was the inmost life of the fish, and now it is struck. Notice what happened just there? What just happened in that sentence? Hey, notice. He's dead. No, he's dead. pay attention. What just happened? He broke the law. And now it is struck. The, that, like, the last thing no, that we're talking about. He changed the tense. The tense changed. Wait, do you see this? Yeah, no, I, I don't. Okay, no. Listen, everything is in past tense. Oh. And then suddenly it's, and now it is struck. Let me read this part. For... Starting from his trance into that unspeakable thing called the fury, the monster horribly wallowed in his blood, overwrapped himself in impenetrable, mad, boiling spray, so that the imperiled craft instantly dropped astern and had much to do blindly to struggle out from the frenzied twilight into the clear of the day. And there's more, right? So listen, last word. Can you just get this down, Eric, before you leave? Please. It's this. The before is, as you guys have pointed out, this harmless whale, right? But the after, and on two, I think it was 258, after, is we have a vicious, I would even call a murder, right? That's the, the sense you get, is the thing has been stabbed to death, harmless creature, and if you remember, the final image we get is of Stubb looking at the thing, and what does he say? Pipe. Both pipes smoked out. Both pipes smoked out. Like, in other words... And you know what he does? He, he, he empties his pipe over the monstrous, or the vast corpse he had made. So does Stubb respect what he's done? No, I mean, he's like a criminal. Are you with me? Yeah. So I hope you leave with this idea like, wait, what, what should we think about this whaling business? It's, it's pretty not vicious. It's, it's awesome. terrible. It's, it's All right, Stubb. Devin, let's hear that thing.